Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the E36 big turbo build. So in this episode, I'm gonna be plugging the ECU into the car and seeing if the lights and stuff turn on. I'm also gonna be maybe running my E85 fuel lines um, up to the engine. We've got heaps more stuff coming, so let's just wait and see what we get done. So let me show you guys all the new parts that I have got in the last week. Starting out with E36 engine arms, which will bolt straight onto there because those E34 ones don't fit. Still waiting for my other engine mount to come i also picked up an ac compressor so we're gonna have aircon for this summer which is awesome and i've got a few more lines so that completes the aircon system i picked up a four cylinder radiator which i know isn't gonna be the best but it's just gonna be good for now to get it running once i go turbo on the car i'm gonna buy that um radiator for the e36 and it's got an alloy expansion tank and then it comes with a thermo fan on the front as well with a shroud so i'm gonna use that definitely but for now, the four cylinder radiator will work. So I just had an idea. I'm gonna move the engine closer to the car and plug the ECU in and then see if we can get the car's lights to turn on and that, not the headlights, the interior lights and stuff. Because at this point, I don't know what is going on with the actual car's wiring. Yeah, I'm just gonna get my dad to move the engine forward with the forklift and then see if we can get some lights on. Right, now we can start it up. So now that I've got the engine like way closer, I think all I have to do is plug the ECU connector in. I might try that. I might get the battery out of my 335, put it in here, and then see if any lights come on. It only just reaches. Yes. Yeehaw. I wonder if I need any of these to be hooked up. I don't know. I never had engine out car before. Why is it not doing anything? What am I doing wrong? So for some reason, the it's not starting like the not starting but the lights aren't turning on i think it's because these wires some of these wires off the engine harness like this ground and this cable have to be plugged in for anything to work so i'm just going to pull the engine back out and just do that stuff later when i actually put the engine in if anyone knows do i need this and this to actually turn the ignition on and get lights in the car because i've got the power cable going to the starter motor and then everything else is hooked up, and the battery's hooked up. Oh, and I've got this ground wire going to the ground. It's just not turning on. So I think it must be these ones. Someone comment down below. So now we're gonna fix up the power steering steering lines and the, what was it? Fuel lines. And the fuel lines. Why are you doing that with your hand? <laughs> That's what you do in your videos. <laughs> so now, so this is the power steering hose I need to fix up. Someone's just ripped the hose out of there, so I'm just gonna get an angle grinder and cut there. And that way when I put the engine on, I can um, attach the hose straight on there and just hose clamp it. So I'll just quickly do that. So we have some E85 fuel line hoses. So I'm gonna run these from the fuel tank all the way to the engine and it can hold E85 and not deteriorate. So this is perfect for our build. All right, this is one of the lines. I'm hoping it's gonna be long enough, hey? So that's the hose there. I'm just gonna literally clamp them on. Let's go under and see what fitting is under that attaches to the fuel tank. All right, so I'm under the car now and I'm gonna show you the brackets that hold up the fuel line. And these are the brackets. I just need to take those screws out and then I don't know if you guys can see where the fuel line goes through. It's gonna be too small for my E85 fuel line. So these are all the mounts that came off the car. Basically, I just unscrewed one bolt there and this just came off and this is just, you just pull it off, that's it. So I need to make this fit through here. I think I'm just gonna rip this center bit out. Yeah, and then I should be able to fit both of the lines through here. Should be easy. Look at my sick glasses, bro. Glasses. So I just grinded out these, and as you can see, now the hose fits through, and the other hose fits through. Oh, moist. Double penetration right there. Just kidding. <laughs> So I just realized that I made a freaking stupid mistake. I don't know why, but I was gonna connect the E85 line straight to the rubber lines. 
which is dumb because that doesn't really make sense in putting 85 lines in. So I'm gonna actually remove them, pull them through, and then feed them through the from the top through the tank and then get rid of all the rubber lines. So hopefully it will just feed through nice and easy and then that way we'll have no rubber in the fuel lines and nothing will break. So I just gotta undo this fuel cap thing here so I can get to the fuel lines. Yes, I got the fuel hoses off without breaking it. That is a big success. Great success! So now I just have to like feed these through and figure out where they go down so I can feed the other ones through the same way. So it looks like I'm gonna have to drop the whole fuel tank down to get to those lines. So I'm just gonna drop that down and then feed the new lines and bolt it back up pretty much. So now what I have to do is just hook up these hoses onto there. So I'm just gonna get some hose clamps and hook that up now, and then I can put the back seat back in, and this is this is all sorted in here. One thing I actually have to do is figure out which hose is which, because when I put them in, I didn't take note of which one was which. When I hook it up to the engine, I'm probably gonna do it backwards. So <laughs> I'm just gonna like, I don't know, I might pull it through a bit and then see which one's tighter down there and maybe then I'll know, I don't know, I'll figure it out. So some more parts arrived for the E36 last night. So we've got the other engine mount that I ordered. The car already came with one and it seemed pretty good so I just ordered one. I probably should have got two but it doesn't really matter. Probably gonna be put polyurethane bushings in anyway when I turbo it. And it also came with, I got this. <laughs> so I got this little, guess what this is? It's a fuel filter. It's tiny, the stock BMW one is like this big and this one's tiny, but it's see-through, so I thought it'd be cool to see how much junk is built up in like fuel that we put in our car. So I'm just gonna put this on the fuel feed line that goes up to the engine. Probably just gonna mount it right near the engine. It's probably gonna fill up and get blocked really quick, but I don't know, I just bought it. It was like $5, so. So these are the lines, the E85 lines. Um, this one is the return line so that means this one's the feed so i need to figure out somewhere where i can mount it maybe to like that thing there you can just chill anywhere really it's just tiny it doesn't need to sit anywhere so i've decided to actually wait until the end is in before i put the fuel filter in just because i don't know how long the hoses need to be yet yeah we'll do that after but I've got the engine mounts now, so I'm going to put the engine mounts on the subframe and bolt them up. At the moment, there's really not too much to do on the car. I'm kind of just waiting for parts. So the biggest things that I'm waiting for is the clutch. I ordered that about a week ago. It should come in about a week or two. Um, and I ordered this one right here. It's the C, I think it's the CM Stage 4 clutch. And it comes with a six-puck ceramic clutch. But it has springs this time. Last time, my clutch had no springs and it was just really chattery and like it just drove like absolute crap on the street it was just instant engagement so this time um we've got springs in it and it says it can hold up to 500 horsepower so i guess we'll just see about that i'm hoping to get about 450 wheel horsepower on this build that is my kind of my goal i'd like to see closer to like 500 500 wheel horsepower would just be the ultimate goal but i don't know how much the stock engine can take i don't think it can take that much so 450 wheel horsepower should be a good achievement if we can get that. So yeah, I'm just waiting for the clutch. The other thing is a really nice guy who is watches my YouTube videos. I can't remember his name. I'll put his name right up on the screen now. He's sending me a oil pickup for the engine. As you guys saw last episode, I ordered a new sump and I thought the oil pickup would come with it, but it didn't. And I was pretty devastated. So, cause I don't know where else to get one. I can't find him anywhere. This guy reached out to me and said, hey dude, I'll send you one. I'm in Western Australia. And so he's sent that to me and it should be arriving in like a day or two. So we should have that by the next video. And as soon as we get that, we can put it in the bottom of the engine, put the sump on and everything, and then get all of that ready. I need to get some sump bolts too, that reminds me. And I just want to drive it already. I just want to do some drifting. So annoying, it takes so long. Put those engine mounts on now, I'm rambling too much. So they go, I think they go this way. And that sits in there like that. I'll get the other one too. Where is it? There it is. There we go. Two, I mean one new engine mount. And this is the old one. But they look the same, I think, hopefully. So I just realized that this is the stock 318 mount and this is like a six cylinder mount. It's actually bigger. It's hard to tell, but it is bigger. So I'm gonna need to get another one of these before I put them on. Freaking heck. 
So many parts to get. So now what I'm gonna do is pull this engine loom apart because on the E36s, the ECU sits on the front left side of the car and on the E34, which is what this engine's out of, is it sits on the right side. So ECU's over here and it needs to go on the other side. Just for now, I'm gonna just do a dodgy tape job and then once the engine's actually in, we'll make it nice and tidy. Probably gonna have to do a lot of cutting right now. Always, holy sh Holy wires. I don't want to break anything. Eh? Maybe I should undo these bolts. I think I'm just going to get rid of this, hey. I don't think I need it. Pretty much this is just going to go all the way over this side. I don't think anything needs to go to the other side. Ooh, what about this? I don't know. That's a ground. Oh, that's not a ground. Where does this go? I got this thing off. I don't think I need it anymore. I believe that everything on the loom goes over to the other side. I may be wrong, so I'm gonna have to look up some diagrams tonight. I know that these grounds can just go anywhere, but there's this one wire on the loom and it's a red positive wire, and I don't know where that goes, so I'm gonna have to do some research and figure out where that goes. If anyone knows, tell me. This is gonna be the end of this video, guys. We are just waiting for parts, like, the car's just chilling right now. It's like, when are you gonna start me, bitch? I've got heaps of parts here, just waiting for that clutch and the oil pickup. When I get those two, we should be ready to just put the engine in. So I am gonna sit here until the parts arrive. I don't care if I don't eat or sleep. I'm gonna wait for the truck to come to my door with that clutch. If you guys like the videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys very soon.